everybody, it's Michael from ScaleHeliPilot.com. We're right in the middle of this llama build and I have discovered a number of minor uh, but irritating enough issues that I've pointed them out to Vario. They are investigating and I want you to be aware of them. You can certainly get through the build uh, despite these issues, but it takes some coping. I'll go through those areas right now. As you look at this frame, um, I am going to be recommending to Vario, and they're not gonna like it, but uh, that somehow this needs to be two millimeters wider than it is. And the reason why is after you fit these uh, faux tanks in, and really these are the cause of the entire problem, and maybe there's a different way around it, and maybe they don't have to expand them. But when you, when you slot these guys in, there is a paper width, and I mean a paper width clearance on the inside of this for the main gear to rotate in. Now, you can take your 80 grit sandpaper and kind of grind this down, and you'll probably be okay, uh, it, but the, the gear is up here, very close to the support, and my problem is that you shouldn't have to do that, uh, and if you screw it up, you're gonna screw a lot of things up. So what I figured out, and I'll try to show you this, if you mate these two bottom halves, and by the way, when I cut these, I had to cut them more than, um, than, than just bisecting the pieces. What you'll notice is when you put them together, they kind of angle out at the top. And that's what you need in order to get the clearance for the gear. And this doesn't happen quickly and it doesn't happen easily. It's a lot of massaging. I'm also going to point out something else. The back of this thing is way different from what the plans call for. And that is because as you slide the mechanics in, and let's see if we can get a good angle here. As you slide the mechanics in this way, these horns right here hit the back of the tank right here. And so we had to cut this away in order to just get the mechanics to slide in without cracking the side of the fiberglass. So these are things that you've got to watch out for. And one last one, and I'll show you this. I'll actually slide this in and show you that this is not a great fit actually when you're going in, but this is, this is not too bad. The gear is a little bit wider than, than, the, than the two posts. I can get it, I can slide it in, I can get it past. It's a nylon gear, it's not too bad. But here's what happens. When you slide this all the way, the back of the black metal uh, aluminum main plate hits, whoops, let's get this out of here now. <laughs> this is why we love the hobby, isn't it? Um, what happens is the back of the plate hits these two supports right here. And you can see where I've worn them away, you know, slamming into it. And what I had to do is, it's not pretty, but uh, I had to take a Dremel and cut grooves here just to give me that millimeter play that I needed to line the holes up on the mounting tabs. So you want to spend time on this. Uh, I originally taped these, um, these uh, little support pieces to the top of the tank, like recommended, and tested it, tested it, tested it, and when I was ready, I glued them, and so these are attached. And, and you know, this is fairly ingenious, these little, little nuts uh, that you slide into the slot, and then you can secure this. But you have got to mess with the angle on, on the tanks in order to get them far enough away for the main gear to spin inside. And like I said, I've got a one piece of paper's width 
on each side. And it doesn't touch, and presumably that's all you need, but to me that's a really tight tolerance. These frames are handmade, so sure, there's gonna be some variation. I didn't wanna bend, you know, bend these and compromise the joints, and frankly, you don't need to. Uh, as, as long as you bolt it in, uh, get your tank to cope, and then spin the rotor head assembly and see if it works. That's what we're gonna do next. Here are the assembled mechanics. I've got the side tanks bolted in and the mechanics bolted in. And you'll see at the bottom, there's a vertex where the two tank halves meet and allow me to form that slight angle at the top to give room for the main gear. This is essential for allowing that gear to rotate freely. Thing. Now, if you listen, you will hear zero binding, and that is new. Part of the problem is that the tanks are restricted by, by this strut, and they can go no further. And, and the gear is wide, and it's, I, I mean, you saw how close it is. I don't know how you solve this problem, but this structure overall, simply to cover up the mechanics and be a scale feature, is highly intrusive, and I believe that it makes uh, installation a real challenge. I mean, that's what we do in the hobby, right? But uh, at some point, you've got to modify the design in order to accomplish both things, both functionality and scale detail. So that's my take on this. And of course, Vario has been wide open to receiving comments and uh, taking suggestions. So I will pursue this with them uh, as usual. If you like this video, there's plenty more at scaleheliPilot.com. Not only are there videos, there are courses, articles, discussions, build stories, events, marketplace, and more. Head over to scaleheliPilot.com and join the fun.